everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Be sure to check out my Instagram listed down below. I post a lot of fun little previews for tutorials as well as other fun crafts that are going on here in my craft room. In today's video we are going to show you some more mystery box projects. Today's project is going to be the garden flag. I'm going to show you guys how to make this adorable garden flag using some StarCraft HD. We're going to use the offset feature in Cricut Design Space so I can show you guys how to do a fun knockout design. And then I'll show you guys how to use the stick and add the um, string to the top. Really easy, really fun craft and you can do so much with this. So let's get started. We're going to start here in Cricut Design Space and we're going to upload the picture from the 143 vinyl website of the flag, just so we can kind of get an idea of if we like the look of what we're going to put on it. So what we're gonna do is click upload image, then click browse. Find where you saved that image. Now I just recently saved mine, so I'm gonna be able to go into my uh, quick access and find my garden flag blank. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose complex and click continue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of just the white background just for my own sanity. But you can leave it if you want, it doesn't really matter. And then you want to save it as a print and cut image. Again, we're just using this to kind of mock up our design just to see if we like how it looks. So go ahead and select that flag and click insert images. I can just move the flag out of the way for now because we're not going to mess with that quite yet. So what I'm going to do is add my text and I'm going to put home sweet home on this. So I'm going to type home and home. Once you have that typed up, I'm going to slide this out of the way a little bit and you can select your font. So in the upper left hand side here under font, just go ahead and click that and I'm going to use my system fonts. Now I know which font I'm going to use. I'm going to use a font called Mostly Sunshine and this is a duo font. I'll link it down below for you guys. But what I love about duo fonts is that you just takes all of the guesswork out of combining fonts and making font pairings. These fonts go really, really well together and they look really good. So I'm going to use the Mostly Sunshine Mono for the home part and then I'm going to add Sweet. So all I'm going to do is just type in the word Sweet and I'm going to change this font to the Mostly Sunshine, this one here, which is the script font. Now with this one, we do need to space it down. So I'm gonna use the letter spacing right up here at the top, kind of in the center, and space it down just a bit, but I am gonna need to ungroup it to get it properly spaced at the end of the word. So what I'm gonna do is over here in our layers tab, click the word ungroup, which is at the top of your layers. Then select each letter and just move them over a little bit so that they are touching. Simple as that. Now go ahead and select them and click weld. Once you've done that, what we're gonna do is take the two homes and I want to ungroup them, but I wanna ungroup them to lines so that each home is separate. What you'll do is click advanced, which is right in the center at the top and ungroup two lines. Now what we have are two separate words for the word home. Now what I wanna do is sort of space these so that the suite looks really good. I'm going to change the color of the word sweet so it's a little easier for us to see it against the word home. All you have to do is just sort of size it to where you think it looks good against the word home. I think that looks pretty good, maybe a little bit smaller. That looks pretty good. Now we are going to have them overlap a little because we're going to do a knockout style on this. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this and make it much bigger so we can see what we're doing and see if we like the way we have it all laid out. So I love the word sweet. I am going to move this to the front so I can see it better. So what I'm going to do is right click on the word sweet and click send to front. That just makes it easier to see where it's sitting on the word home. And like I said, I do want it to cut into the letters just a little bit so that we can kind of see the words. Now if your home, your little homes here, they don't look like they're um, like lined up, that's okay. What you can do is, and they're definitely not, I'm going to select all three of these, oops, not the flag. I'm going to select the suite, the home, and the two homes, and I'm going to click align, and then I just want to align them horizontally. That's just going to make sure that everything is nice and centered. That looks much better. 
So like I said, we're gonna do a knockout style with this. So select the word sweet, and we're gonna use the Cricut offset feature. So click on offset. Now the 0.25 offset is too big for what we wanna do, so I'm gonna change it to 0.1. That's gonna give us a really thin offset, and I think that looks a little bit better. Go ahead and click apply. Now, because I can't really see it very well, I'm gonna, against the home, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of our offset. That's gonna help us see kind of where we would like to place the home so that it can slice out a little bit of the words. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and center these one more time because I'm sure I misaligned them when I moved them. So I'm just gonna click center just to make sure everything is centered. That looks really, really good. Our next step is to take the two words of home and we want to weld them. What that does is it creates one piece so that the Cricut Design Space can slice out the knockout part for the words. So what you wanna do is select your weld result offset and select your weld result homes and click slice. You're gonna get a bunch of different pieces over in your layers tab. So what you're gonna see is you have a couple pieces like this one, which I'll move with my um, keyboard here so you can see it, that we don't need. These are just random extra pieces of the word home, so we don't need them. Go ahead and delete them. We also no longer need the knockout piece or the offset. So you can go ahead and get rid of the big blue section and we can get rid of this little blue section here as well. It looks just like the black section that we deleted earlier. So we are all set. This is our home sweet home sign. Now, what we wanna do is I'm gonna make our flag quite a bit bigger so that we can see it. We're, this is not gonna be for scale. This is just gonna be so we can see if we like the layout and we like the way it looks on our flag. So I'm just gonna go ahead and size this down a little bit just to see if I like the way it looks. I think that looks really cute. Now we are cutting this with a light gray, like a medium gray, so I'm gonna change this to gray. And then we're gonna do the sweet in a like really pretty light blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the light blue. I think that looks perfect. Now I have measured my flag and the space that I have to work with is about 6.25 inches wide because I just wanna keep it inside of our jar, but you can kind of make it however you really want. So it's just up to you, whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna change this over and I think actually I could probably go six and a half wide on this one. So I'm just kinda gonna play with it a little bit and just see if that looks like a good size. I think that's gonna be a perfect size for what we wanna do. It's about six and a half by six and a half. We are ready to cut. We don't have to do anything like flipping or mirroring, nothing like that to this. So it's really easy to make this. All you have to do now is click make it and you'll see that you have the two mats. We have our gray mat for the words home and then we have the blue mat for sweet. We're gonna cut this with the matte Starcraft HD which means we're gonna cut this on the vinyl setting. You don't need to do anything special, just cut it on the regular vinyl setting. I'll take you over to the machine and show you guys how to load it and how to weed it. We're ready to load our mat, so I have our light blue and our gray, and then we have our standard grip mat. So all I'm gonna do is line my vinyl up. You're gonna put it face up on your mat and make sure that it is well stuck down. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and load your mat, making sure that it's under these little white tabs on the side, and then we'll get it all cut out. So just go ahead and hit the Cricut button and we'll let it do its thing. Once it's done cutting the first one out, go ahead and unload it. And I'm gonna flip it over so that I don't bend my vinyl and I'm gonna bend my mat back. And then just sort of work my vinyl off of my mat. It's just a good way to keep your vinyl from getting any curling or anything messed up. So we'll go ahead and load our next vinyl, which is the pale blue here. Go ahead and do the same thing. Just load that on your mat. And then this is gonna cut out the word sweet. And then we can get everything weeded. Now, just a quick tip to you, if your mat is getting a little less sticky in this top corner, because you can see this is the top, you can actually load your mat either direction. The back and the top, the bottom and the top, if you will, are the same dimensions apart, so you can load it the opposite direction. Cool. 
Once that's done, let's go ahead and unload it and we'll do the same thing. We're just gonna flip it right on over and peel our mat off of the vinyl. Now, one thing I always recommend is to make sure that you keep your cover, your little plastic that comes on your mat. That helps protect it from any uh, dirt and debris, dog hair, things like that, that might be floating around your house. And then I just hang mine on the bottom of my pegboard. The next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and trim out where our images are. That way you're not wasting any vinyl. So I just trim around where my images are here, my words. And now we can weed and this is where the little red pin pen is gonna come in handy. What I love about the pin pen is that it makes everything really easy to weed. It's great for these little small areas. Now I do have a little teeny spot that did get caught when it was getting cut. It's just the tiniest little piece of the H. So I'm not real worried about it. It'll be okay. But what I love about the pin pen is you kind of hold it just like you would a regular pen. And instead of stabbing straight down or it's more of a scooping motion. So you're just gonna scoop it up and then you can just weed your vinyl. If you haven't used StarCraft HD before, I highly recommend trying it. It is one of my favorite vinyls. This is the matte and I included the matte type because it's my favorite. I really prefer the matte look over the glossy and this has a five to six year outdoor life. This is actually made for these types of items, these flags, because it does have a UV protectant. We do not recommend using HTV on these flags because that is not UV protected. So you will have fading, which can make your flag not last as long and not look as beautiful for as long. So definitely want to use a quality permanent vinyl on these. And you can see how nicely this weeds. It weeds so well, so easy to work with. And it's just such a nice quality vinyl. And I want this flag to last for years to come, so we're gonna make sure that we use good stuff. Again, we don't use HTV on these. These are actually made out of a PVC, and the heat really isn't good for them either. We're gonna use the parchment paper method to make sure we get everything lined up correctly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get a piece of transfer tape and I like to cut mine pretty big. I'm gonna go ahead and just lay the home on it because the home we are gonna go ahead and layer over the suite. It'll be a little bit easier to do it that way because we'll have the large piece of transfer tape all ready to go. So I'm gonna leave a little tail up at the top. That just kind of helps it stay where you want it. Apparently I didn't cut far enough right there. And then I just roll what's left up on to my transfer tape. Now we are gonna need a squeegee for this. And I'm gonna use the one that was included in the last mystery box we had. So let me slide our flag just out of the way a little bit. And what you're gonna do is burnish down the word home. And you wanna burnish that down really, really well. And then all I do is I'm gonna actually flip mine over so that the backing is up and I peel my backing off of my vinyl. I find this to work a lot better than trying to do it the other direction. Many, many years of doing vinyl has taught me that this is a great way to do it. Now, if you have a little spot that lifts, you can just press it right back down. And there we go. Very, very easy. Now what I'm gonna do is pull in my parchment paper and my word suite and my second piece of parchment paper. I put one piece of parchment paper on the table so that it doesn't stick to the table and one part piece of parchment paper over the decal. That way the home doesn't stick to the suite. So all I'm gonna do is lay my home over my top piece of parchment paper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of move it around and figure out where it fits onto the word suite. So you wanna make sure that it's lined up on all sides correctly. And it's a little tough sometimes, it can take a little bit of finesse and sometimes it's a little slidey. I will be honest with you, this does take a little bit of practice. But once you get it, it's so easy to do and it's really, really fun and it's just a really surefire way to make sure that you are 
lining everything up the way it should be. Actually, I think I need to move it over just a little and up a little bit. And down just a hair. That looks really good right there. So what I have is this little tail right here where I had the transfer tape hanging over. So all I do is I fold this back over while holding that little tail down, move the parchment paper out of the way, keeping the parchment paper right here on the table so that the home doesn't stick to the table, burnish down the word sweet, and then I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna flip this over and then I'm gonna peel the backing off of the word sweet. Now we're ready to apply it to our flag. You wanna make sure that your flag is free of debris or anything like that. So make sure that you don't have any dog hair on it. And you can still use the parchment paper again. I love this parchment paper method for helping me line up where I wanna put stuff on other things. It's a great way to do that. You see, I just have a little hanging over the parchment paper right here. And all I'm gonna do is figure out about where I want this to sit within my jar and just kind of mess around and figure out if I like it and where I want it. I think that looks really good. So what I'm gonna do is press down this part of my transfer tape right here, and then I'm just gonna take my parchment paper, this part, and I'm gonna take it out from under that. You can fold this over, pull your parchment paper out, and then lay your decal right back down. Get your squeegee back out, and then just burnish this down to your garden flag. This is such a fun and easy craft. And again, you guys can do so many things with this that I'm so excited. And I just wanted something that could work for both spring and summer. And I thought this was just the perfect way to do that. And these colors, I really think complement the flag itself and all the very pretty colors that it has. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull this off nice and slow. And what I love is the transfer tape does not damage your flag at all. These flags are really high quality. Again, they're meant to go outside, so you can do a lot with them. And then I'll show you the back of the flag too, just in case you don't have the mystery box. The back is blank, and occasionally I will put like a little design on the back because when we hang our flag, you can see the back from our porch. So sometimes I'll just put like something fun on the back. But for this one, we're just gonna leave it just like this, and I think it's really cute. So I'm gonna show you guys how to hang this using the wooden rod because that is why I included it, because you don't necessarily have to hang this on a flagpole. So this is the little rod that you get with your purchase and the ends actually screw off. So if you take one of the ends off like that, you can slide your flag right through. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this is a great option if you wanna hang this as like a door hanger or if you'd like to use it inside the home, you can use this little wooden rod. So then all you have to do is just screw the end right back in and this holds the flag super secure. The flag won't fall off of these, which I love. Just make sure that's on there. And now you can see your flag is on there good and tight. So now what we'll do, and this is actually from winter, but I think this is pretty. This is like a really pretty ropey ribbon. So all I wanna do, and this is actually wire ribbon, so I might have a better luck, is I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a knot. I cannot tie a bow. Um, if you have good bow tutorials, please leave them in the comments because I am not a bow tier. I cannot tie a bow. Um, never have been able to, probably never will, but I'm willing to try if somebody knows of a good tutorial. And I'm just gonna kind of size it where I want it to hang and trim off the little rope here and then just go ahead and tie it again. Now, if you want it to look neater, you can absolutely flip the ties to the back. Again, I can't tie a bow, please someone teach me. But all I'm gonna do is just tie this and I'm just gonna kind of turn the ties so that they're towards the back. And you can just do that by kind of moving them on the rod here. And there you go, you have a flag. I hope you guys had so much fun learning how to make the garden flag from our mystery box. This is one of my favorite flags and I really hope that you guys will love it too. If you guys make anything with your flag, please be sure to tag me on Facebook, on Instagram, all the places, because I wanna see what you guys create with some of my favorite things. If you have questions, let me know in the box below. I hope you guys have a great day and happy crafting.